Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Inshallah, I will start with a short recitation of the Quran for purposes of barakah. We ask Allah to bless every one of us. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وفي موسى إذ أرسلناه إلى فرعون بسلطان مبين فتولى بركنه وقال ساحر أو مجنون فأخذناه وجنوده فنبذناهم في اليم وهو مليم وفي عاد إذ أرسلنا عليهم الريح العقيم ما تذر من شيء أتت عليه إلا جعلته كرميم وفي ثمود إذ قيل لهم تمتعوا حتى حين فعتوا عن أمر ربهم فأخذتهم الصاعقة وهم ينظرون فما استطاعوا من قيام وما كانوا منتصرين وقوم نوح من قبل إنهم كانوا قوما فاسقين والسماء بنيناها بأيد وإنا لموسعون والأرض فرشناها فنعم الماهدون ومن كل شيء خلقنا زوجين ومن كل شيء خلقنا زوجين لعلكم تذكرون ففروا إلى الله إني لكم منه نذير مبين ولا تجعلوا مع الله إلها آخر إني لكم منه نذير مبين كذلك ما أتى الذين من قبلهم من رسول إلا قالوا إلا قالوا ساحر أو مجنون أتواصوا به بل هم قوم طاغون فتول عنهم فما أنت بملوم وذكر فإن الذكرى تنفع المؤمنين وما خلقت الجن والإنس إلا ليعبدون ما أريد منهم من رزق وما أريد أن يطعمون إن الله هو الرزاق ذو القوة المتين فإن للذين ظلموا ذنوبا مثل ذنوب أصحابهم فلا يستعجلون فويل للذين كفروا من يومهم الذي يوعدون بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام الأتمان الأكملان على خير خلقه أجمعين وبعد We commence by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sending blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam his entire household We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless him 
and to bless all his companions. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless all those who have struggled and strived through the, the generations in a way that today the deen has come to us. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless every single one of us and to grant us all goodness and to grant us entry into paradise through his mercy. Beloved brothers and sisters in Islam, the question we have this evening, are we losing focus? Right now we are focused on a fan that is to my left, alhamdulillah. So we have lost focus. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us, to grant us ease and goodness, and really to open our doors, hearts and minds. At the same time, it is definitely an honor to be here in your midst in this beautiful city of Bangalore, which mashallah is a gift of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I see it is a very beautiful city and its people are even more beautiful. Alhamdulillah. It's my first time here and inshallah not my last by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why were we created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? I read a verse a few moments ago where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of something very important and I'm sure most of us would know this off by heart. وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ I have not created mankind or jinn kind except that they worship me. مَا أُرِيدُ مِنْهُمْ مِنْ رِزْقَ I do not want from them any sustenance. In fact, Allah is the provider. Whatever I have, whatever you have, is only and solely from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So He is the provider, He is the grantor, He is the one in absolute control, and He does not want sustenance from us. In fact, if we worship Him, we may worship Him through the very sustenance that He has provided us. He gave us life, He gave us health, He gave us wealth. Through the life, the health and the wealth that He has given us, he expects us to worship him for our benefit, not for his. Ya ayyuhannasu antumul fuqara'u ila Allah. Wallahu huwa al-ghaniyul hamid. In yashak yudhibkum wa yati bi khalqin jadeed. وَمَا ذَلِكَ عَلَى اللَّهِ بِعَزِيزٍ O people, you are the ones who are in absolute need of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah is totally independent from you. He does not need you for anything whatsoever. If He wants, He can delete you and replace you with others. And that is not difficult at all for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Look at the powerful verses of the Quran. He can delete me and he can delete you. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says very clearly that he has deleted previous nations. The verses I read at the beginning of this talk where Allah speaks about Ad and Thamud and Fir'aun and the others who were much more powerful than I am and you are. They had lots of wealth. Some of the people of Fir'aun such as a man known as Qarun. He had so much wealth that the keys to the treasures of his wealth were so heavy for even a group of strong men to carry. Imagine, not the treasures, only the keys to the treasures of his wealth. We gave him so much treasures that the keys of those treasures were difficult to be carried by a group of strong men. Subhanallah. Isn't that more than what I have and you have? Today we have a little card and that card is what we're worth. Subhanallah. Perhaps it says visa on there or it might be saying something else. But that's what we're worth. One little plastic piece. Allah protect us. They were given much wealth and Allah says we deleted them. Qarun himself was made to be eaten by the earth in a way that there was no remnants. What happened to the people of Thamud, the people of Ad? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks of Fir'aun and his cronies. 
فكلا أخذنا بذنبه Each one of them We punished them because of their sins They had sins and they did not turn We have a gift of istighfar Istighfar meaning to turn to Allah Ask Allah's forgiveness, He will forgive you We always say four conditions of repentance Admit the sin, regret it Ask Allah to forgive you and promise not to do it again Admit your sin, regret it Ask Allah to forgive you and promise not to do it again Your sin is deleted Wiped out, formatted, mashallah You have a new hard drive So it's not even traceable We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala In this beautiful IT city For us to give examples that will really be befitting For the mindset and the brain level of those whom I'm seated in front of Or should I say I'm standing in front of Look at how I've become I don't even know whether I'm standing or sitting Mashallah. Beloved brothers and sisters What is the focus? What should be in front of my eyes? Before we speak of whether or not we are losing focus, we need to ask ourselves, what is it that we are meant to be focused upon? We can answer that in many ways, but ultimately our focus is the pleasure of Allah and Jannah is a result. So I am meant to be focused upon paradise. I am meant to be focused upon Preparing for the day I meet my maker. Aren't you excited about meeting your maker? Subhanallah. I'm going to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and so are you. I want to see him, don't you? Subhanallah. Today I had people saying we can't believe that we're seeing you in person. I am no big deal, believe me. You might get so fed up of what, you know, of seeing me that you might think, okay, I don't want to see him. But with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, my maker and yours, Imagine if we were to see Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on the day of judgment. What an honor. Don't I want to see him? Well, prepare for that day. Focus on it, subhanallah. But more important than that is to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah grant us the intercession of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on the day of Qiyamah. And on the day of judgment, may Allah open our doors and grant us a sip from the pond of Kawthar. Remember, my brothers and sisters, I should be focused in my life. Upon paradise, my eyes should be set on it completely. Whatever I do every single day, I must ask myself, will this earn me paradise? If it does, it will earn you the meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When the people of Jannah get to Jannah, paradise, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask them, did you find what you were promised to be true? They will say, yes, indeed. Anything you want, subhanallah. Allah says, لَهُمْ مَا يَشَاءُونَ فِيهَا وَلَدَيْنَا مَزِيدٌ They will have whatever they wish for in paradise. And we have something extra to give them. We have something more to give them. What is the explanation of this extra? The muhaddithin or mufassireen and the ulama and the sahaba radiallahu anhum explain it. They say it is the gift of looking at Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which will be a gift for those who enter paradise. Yes, the hadith says مَا مِنْكُمْ مِنْ أَحَدٍ إِلَّا سَيُكَلِّمُهُ رَبُّهُ لَيْسَ بَيْنَهُ وَبَيْنَهُ تُرْجُمَانٌ Every single one of you will speak to your maker without a middleman without an interpreter without someone in the middle to explain to you what is being said but that is speaking what about looking as for looking it's a gift of the people who go into jannah you want to see your maker so do i i'm intrigued by his creation what about the one who made it today we look at a motor vehicle we look at the new mobile phones have you seen the iphone 6 wow well i haven't i'm waiting for it have you seen what can I say? The S4, have you seen it? Samsung, mashallah. Have you seen it? They told me, someone tried to tell me, you know, Samsung, I don't know why they call it that. You know, perhaps it's some Japanese term or Korean term or whatever it is. I said, no, very simple. There was a man known as Sam. He passed away, but when he was alive, he used to sing. Now it's past tense. So they say, Samsung, may Allah protect us. May he keep us from amongst those who recite, inshallah. May Allah open our doors, really. So whether it is Sam sung or didn't sing, we don't mind. 
The reality is we want our eyes fixed, not on the next iPhone to come out or the next Android to come out or HTC to come out. Our eyes should be fixed on Jannah, whatever I see in this world. You see a good looking person, mashallah. Your eyes should be focused on the maker of that person more than anything else. You see something brilliant that soothes the eyes, the sceneries in Bangalore, beautiful sceneries which you take for granted. But people like myself would notice because we come from somewhere else. Subhanallah. If you see those sceneries immediately, instead of just saying, wow, you know, wow. That's the word today, W-O-W, capital. And sometimes to make it sound big, they put mud. You know what's a mud? They want to stretch the word as though it's Quran. So they will put W and O's from here to the door. Subhanallah. And then another W at the door. And that means I'm very intrigued. We say, Masha Allah as Muslimin. And we say, if he could create such a beautiful scene, I wonder what he must be looking like. La ilaha illallah, Muhammadur Rasulullah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us realize what we should be focusing on. So as I say, the maker, I want to meet him, I want to talk to him. And I want to be close to him. Don't you want to be close to him? Today, if you knew a huge celebrity on the globe and they could phone you, call you, speak to you. If you were to say, I'm very close to this person, sometimes it may be a lie because a lot of people tell lies. And even if we are telling the truth, people think we are lying. So mashallah, we have a problem in the dunya. But when you're close to Allah, and when He declares that He is close to you, what more do you want? What more can I ask for? When Allah says, I am close to you, imagine what He told Ibrahim alayhi salam. He says to us, Allah has taken Ibrahim as a very close friend. Khalil, Al-Khullah, A'la Maratib Al-Mahabbah. One of the highest levels of love is, or should I say, friendship, closeness, is known as Al-Khullah. You are very close. Bosom buddies, as we would say. Imagine if someone says that they are so close to you, and yet they are people whom no one ever sees. If they were to declare that they know you, may Allah protect us. It's easy for every one of us to say, we know that person and this person. But for them to say they know you, that is what they say is the speech we want to hear. So for us to say we are close to Allah is one thing. And for Allah to say, I am close to this worshiper. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. That is where we should be focused. In this world, people will let you down. Your husband will let you down. Your wife will let you down. Your children will let you down. The people around you will let you down. Your brothers and sisters will let you down. Your parents may let you down. Your children may let you down. Your maker will never ever let you down. Allahu Akbar. Never ever let you down. So if you give your heart and your mind away to someone you love, they may let you down. But if you give it away to Allah, He will never let you down. Subhanallah. So we lose focus in this world by giving our heart, mind and soul away to people who can hurt us without giving it away to the one who is meant to be keeping it in a way that he will never hurt us. May Allah open our doors. Jazakumullah khair. Brothers and sisters, the biggest jihad that you can engage in at this moment is to get up and move your vehicle by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we will be proud of you if you actually raise your hand and show us who you are because really, uh, for you to get up is such a big act of worship and for you to be able to get up and face that embarrassment subhanallah it is in the eyes of Allah not embarrassment but rectification of a little error we made and we regain focus by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so I am always a person I actually salute those three in fact I will give complimentary CDs to the same three please brother the people whose cars they are we can give them complimentary CDs by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Getting back to our topic, mashallah, I was saying, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not let us down, but we tend to let ourselves down. Allah does not oppress anyone. Allah does not oppress people at all, but man oppresses himself. 
by disobeying, by transgressing, by focusing in the wrong place. Wallahi, a lot of us have our eyes set on the latest trends, the latest perfumes. We have our eyes set on the latest clothing, the latest in terms of motor vehicles, the latest in terms of motorbikes, the latest in terms of cell phones and technology, the latest in terms of so many things. We have our eyes set on it to the degree that they will have complimentary SMSs that will come in our direction to remind us you are a customer and a client. We now have an update. Allahu Akbar. Yet when we have a complimentary message every day, Allah, come to what? Success. Are you focused on that message? Would you like success? Why is it that when we hear it, we're walking in another direction? If they had a mobile phone to distribute free of charge, we would all be there. But when we are called to success five times a day, we're walking in another direction. We lose focus very quick. So Allah sends us reminders five times a day in a beautiful city like this. I'm sure you hear it almost wherever you are. How do you respond? Do you at least read your salah no matter where you are? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala safeguard us, really. So we want to show ourselves or remind ourselves where we are meant to be focused and what we are actually focusing on. And this is a reality. This is why when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about paradise, good deeds that earn paradise, and he describes paradise, and then he says, وَفِي ذَٰلِكَ فَلْيَتَنَافَسِ الْمُتَنَافِسُونَ It is things like these that those who want to compete with one another should be competing with one another about. Not how beautiful your kitchen is or your home is or your bungalow in Bangalore is, mashallah. But at the same time, you need to know what have you done for that palace in the hereafter? If I give you a small description, you know, I was asked a question about focus. And I was said, no, how can we focus sometimes when we are told that you will be with the same spouse in paradise? It makes, it's the only thing that makes us think, oh, should I really go there? Astaghfirullah. Allah protect us. I hope that's not the case here. You know, people sometimes, out of love for their spouses, they don't get along with them. Out of love for their spouses, they don't get along with them. <laughs> Allah protect us. So what happens? They start saying, him? Him? In paradise? Or her? No ways. No ways. Not at all. Let me tell you. What if you were to look at him or her and firstly the words you are thinking to come out of his mouth or hers the most beautiful are suddenly being spoken as you're speaking of them and your dream that you really imagining subhanallah is suddenly being fulfilled by them as you're thinking and not only that, as you're looking at them, they start looking exactly like what your dream guy looks like. Allahu Akbar. I hope he looks decent, inshallah. Or vice versa. And tall, as you're thinking, oh, the height starts going up. And when you stop, it stops. You try to look again, what? High, oh, tall, mashallah. And then what happens? As you're thinking of a little bit stouter, oh, mashallah, wow, big. And then you think, no, this is a little bit too tall. And they start becoming short again. As your, not voice command, but eye command. Subhanallah. Command of the eye and the brain. You know, today we have, you can press with your finger, the door will open. You can have your iris scan, the door will open. You can speak to your phone, it will reply. They have not developed yet. Maybe you can try. They have not yet developed that which reads your mind. I want to go in now so the door opens. No, it hasn't yet come. That is Allah. He says, Allahu Akbar. In Jannah, in paradise, is whatever a soul wishes for. Whatever you wish for, you will have 
and whatever is tasty to your eyes will be yours. Do you taste with your eyes? No, we taste with our mouths. But Allah says, whatever is tasty to your eyes, which means tall, short, fat, thin, this, that, what, what, everything is yours. Mashallah. You can think of it and it's changing as your, your eyes tasting it. May Allah protect us and grant us ease and goodness. Subhanallah. Look at how beautiful it is described in the Quran. That is what I am focused for. And that is what you should be focused upon as well. Jannah. I want paradise. Now, if you look at that and you understand it, that we are created in this world to worship Allah so that we can meet with him tomorrow. We can earn paradise through his pleasure and his mercy. And you focus on that completely and correctly. It makes your life so easy. And you realize that everything that may appear to be negative in your life is actually an opportunity to refocus. Allahu Akbar. You have a big loss in your business. It's an opportunity to refocus through that loss. Allah draws you closer to him, says my worshiper. I tried to attract your attention in other ways. You never used to come for salah. You never used to raise your hands in dua. You used to worship sticks and stones and trees and graves until when I took your business away overnight, you suddenly found your focus once again and you came back to me. Subhanallah. We suddenly drop. Health is gone. Doctor says, very bad. You need an operation. Allah protect us. May he grant good health to all those who are ill. And may he grant cure to those of us who think we are healthy. Even though we may not know the ailments we have. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us good health. So my brothers and sisters, look at how beautiful Allah is subhanahu wa ta'ala. He grants us the opportunity to refocus by putting something in our lives that we think is negative. So many people... They want to break their marriages because five things are wrong in the marriage. The others are living together and 20 things are wrong in their marriages. My sisters, 20 things are wrong in their marriages. They are living together because they are focused. You will not have in this world whatever you would like. Otherwise, as I always say, there would be no purpose to create paradise. Allahu Akbar. If you were to have everything here, why would Allah create a place and tell you, you will have everything there? There would be duplication. No point. People would say, well, I've got it. Like the non-Muslims, they say, you only live once. Y-O-L-O. -O. You might have seen that. You only live once. They mean, so do as you please. Go and enjoy. You know, have a lot of fun and indulge in the wrong things because you only live once. We say, you only live once, so remain focused. It's your one chance to earn the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not everything that glitters shines. Not everything that seems to be bling bling is actually worth fighting for. May Allah protect us. You may die without having owned a Mercedes Benz. You may die with never having had, for example, a mobile phone of a third generation. You may die having lived a person who may never have been married. Allah protect us. You may have died in that condition, but if you die focused upon what you wish to earn, wallahi that life was worth it even without a spouse. May Allah grant all those who do not have spouses, spouses who will be the coolness of their eyes. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant those who do not have children, children who will be the coolness of their eyes. But if that's what Allah chose for you, believe me, remain focused. It is paradise. It is through not giving you what you want here that he is preparing you to get everything you wish on the other side. Remain focused. Allahu Akbar. Remain focused. If we are, if we are focused, we will not become upset and angry when suddenly our health deteriorates. Our salah will improve. People become old. Allah gives them a gift to become old. They begin to have gray hairs and suddenly they see themselves becoming very old and then they start reading Salah. May Allah make us from those who read Salah even when we are young. There is a special place on the day of judgment for those who grew up in the obedience of Allah, male and female. So imagine those who lived 
in the obedience of Allah. Imagine if it is VIP stand on the day of judgment, what will there be in the life after death? Meaning in Jannah itself. There will be a special lofty rank for them. You know, there are seven categories of people who will achieve the shade on the day of Qiyamah that we always hear about. One is Shabun Nasha'a fi ibadatillahi ta'ala. A young person who grew up in the obedience of Allah. So my beloved young boys and girls, brothers and sisters, remember, as you are young and you are bubbling and bursting with energy, thinking that you are the person, instead of wanting to attract the opposite sex towards you, dress in a way that you will attract Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala towards you. Why do we say this? Man atani yamshi ataituhu harwala. Whoever comes to me walking, I come to him rushing, Allah says. So you want to Allah to come to you, very easy, walk towards him. Whoever comes to Allah a handspan, Allah comes to him a whole foot. So Allah always comes quicker than we come to him. But do we ever come to him? Remain focused on that. You want Allah to befriend you? Imagine if someone had to retweet your tweet and they happen to be a person who has 2.8 million fans. Sheikh Muhammad Al-Arifi, for example. He has almost 3 million fans on Twitter alone. Imagine if he retweets you. Wow. Oh. He retweeted. Can you believe it? No, you can't. Why? Because we feel, obviously, and we are insignificant to a certain extent. In the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we hope to be even a slight bit of significance. But imagine if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I am coming closer to him because he walked towards me. You can never be retweeted by someone if you have said something bad or if you say something against what they stand for. Not at all. You will never achieve closeness to Allah by disobeying him, by going away. This is why I always say, you want to dress to attract the opposite sex, that is what you will get because that's your focus. But you want to dress to bring Allah closer to you by coming closer to him, that is what you will get because you are focused. Allahu Akbar. Do you see? So what do you want? Closeness to Allah or closeness to the girl next door? Allah protect us. And I'm speaking reality. I'm sorry if it might offend a few people. But that's what we do. Can you keep yourself focused? May Allah protect us. And this is why when you are on Facebook and Twitter, what do you do? Are you there in order to attract people towards you? Is that your focus? If that's the case, it will happen. And the result of it, which is also very dear, may also come. Very expensive. You will have to pay a very big payment sometimes. But if you are focused, I am here to benefit for my deen because I don't have time, for example, to go here and go there. Then that is what you will get. And you need to be strict and remain focused because shaitan will come from every angle and he will want to lead you astray and lose focus. Listen to what he told Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He says, he says, I will come to them from the front, the back and from the sides in order to lead them astray. You will find very few of them being thankful to you. To who? To Allah. We need to be thankful to Allah for giving us life so that we can prepare for the eternal life. Imagine someone tells you, listen, come and write your O-level examination now. You say, but I need to prepare for it. No, no, no. You've written it some time back and you're supposed to know. Or just come try your luck because this is the only chance. What will happen? We will be very upset. We will go in protesting. Allah says, come for your examination so that you can pass. We will give you ample time to prepare so that when you pass on the day of Qiyamah, you will then get your prize and your gift. Don't we have time right now? Allah is giving us so much time to prepare. We are ready to be awake until midnight because we are focused on passing the exam tomorrow which will provide for us a certificate to get promoted to the next year. Why is it that we cannot focus even equivalent to the amount of time that we spent studying for an exam that would graduate us to the following year? If we were to be focused and spend the same time 
in preparation for the exam that will graduate us into the following life, we would be successful. Subhanallah. I am worried about graduating to the next grade, but I'm not worried about graduating to the life after death. Where will I go? What will I do? And yet, if you fail your exam in this world, there is something called repeat, repetition. You can rewrite, as they say. When you rewrite and you then have the certificate, nobody asks you, did you pass first time or second time? They just know that you have a certificate. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, you get one chance and you write once. But for as long as you are living, you are the decider. You can look into the books and see how to respond. This is it. That's why we are here this evening. Because we want to learn how to respond. Imagine if someone asked you a question at O level and they told you, you are allowed to look in your book for the answer. You would say, well, what's the point of testing us? Isn't it? What's the point of testing me when I can look in the book? Allah says, go ahead and read the book. We have not yet read the book and we want to pass the examination. Allahul Musta'an. Where is our focus? So if we are focused correctly, it will lead us to understand the rules of the game. By reading the Quran. If you have not read the Quran, how do you expect to know what the test is all about? How do you expect to know what we have focused on? Sometimes when we talk about paradise to the young people, they don't even know what it's all about. Oh yeah, something. That's why they are so attracted to Lamborghinis and Ferraris and so attracted to cell phones, iPhones and so on. And so attracted to little laptops and computers and what have you, various other things of jewelry and makeup and so on. Subhanallah. So focused we are that we can sit and create messages. You know, sometimes I get the WhatsApp message. And I think to myself, I wonder who is sitting free to think of these things. Some people are sitting, they exert their energy and effort and thoughts to come up with something. You know what they said? And I read it this morning and I laughed. And I laughed loudly, though I was on my own. They said, never make a woman cry. Her tears are very expensive. So I'm thinking now, what are they getting to? If you want to make her cry, can you afford it? question is, can you afford to make a woman cry when her tears are very expensive? So I'm wondering, they must be talking about how she's created and so on, soft natured. You know what they said? They said, as the tear drops, the first thing it touches is, I don't know what you call it, something you put on your eye, eyebrows or eye, what, what's it called? This, the eyelash. MashaAllah, I heard a brother saying what it is. You must be knowing, brother. So, they say that costs so much. Say for example, 100 rupees, so you mess that up. Then it comes down and it's hit Revlon. That costs a little bit more. Then it hits DNG. You know, whatever they call it, DNG. DNG, I used to think it means, you know, drop dead gorgeous. But they say, no, you missed out one D. So I said, take out the and from the center and put another D. It might sound better. So they say DNG, and then you've got to something else. And as it goes down, you're paying 1,500 rupees. Allahu Akbar. Imagine, who thought of that? And what happened? And what is the moral of it? But still, we won't make our, our wives cry because we are focused to earning paradise. And that's if the wives don't make us cry. Alhamdulillah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us happy homes, and may He make us from those who are really focused. Remember, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you so many gifts. We sit and we think of so much, but we have not yet read the Quran. We don't spend a little bit of time to listen to what the alim in our locality has to say. We sometimes are not moved by a huge lecture that might be once a lifetime that we've heard. But this is Allah's gift. Did you hear it? The answer is yes, I heard the talk. Well, what did you do about it? Did it help you regain focus? If you say, ah, oh, for a few days, then we've lost. May Allah make us from those who believe really in His mercy. Those who believe that He gives us opportunities to turn to Him. Become a better person and you know how you are going to become a better person. Leave your bad habits, whether it is gambling, whether it is pornography. Pornography is the really the crisis of the age. It has such a bad impact on a person's mind and spirituality and relations and marriage and children and family and surroundings that wallahi it is more detrimental than a weapon of mass destruction. And yet we hear it time and again and we still find Muslims involved in it in a huge way. 
when we need to talk about it because wallahi it drops your level to a level lower than animals may Allah safeguard us and may he forgive our shortcomings and may he make us from those who are clean and pure in our minds our thinking our eyes the way we dress the way we operate in our spirituality may Allah purify us all amen my brothers and sisters so much is happening the enemies are focused on diverting us and provoking us they are focused upon it you find they will keep on provoking and they will not stop what are we focused upon some of us will attend a 100,000 man march but we have not yet marched to the masjid you know that we will attend a 1 million man march against the video that was blasphemous against Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam but we have not yet marched to the masjid that one march to the masjid will gain much more for you and for the ummah than the one million march would have gained but we are not focused for us they taught us how to react to provocation and then they provoked us so both ways we are still controlled by them have we ever thought of that they taught us how to react to provocation then they provoked us we learned our lesson very well of how to react so we reacted how they want not how the nabi wants sallallahu alaihi wasallam and when someone says brother sister how can you react with hooliganism is that the way of the messenger they say he's a sellout he's a puppet how can he say we shouldn't be demonstrating and we shouldn't be burning flags and so on wallahi if you count the number of flags that were burnt and you pick up the number of or the amount of cash that was used for that you would be able to feed one whole village in Indonesia do you know that you'd be able to house at least 10,000 homeless people with that subhanallah may Allah protect us when I say 10,000 homeless I'm being serious go and read the statistics of how many people marched across the globe has it changed anything the truth of the matter is those who have turned to the deen as a result of that blasphemy they were turned by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala there are many the good from amongst us have seized the opportunity to give a message of who Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was to those who don't believe in Islam yet those are the focused they know I want to meet with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be happy with me if I have not given up music, I have not given up watching movies and so on, that is detrimental for myself and my deen. I have not given up bad dress code. I cannot give up an adulterous relation. I cannot give up gambling. I cannot give up, you know, for example, the drugs or the clubbing and so on. I cannot give up so many things, but yet I make a loud noise, but I attended the march, mashallah. I attended the march. So I attended the march, that means my Jannah is already ready. Is that what it is? What would be considered as being focused? Changing your life? I said a few days ago in Malaysia, the enemy is focused and they don't lie to you. They say we hate you and your deen and your messenger. So they outwardly show that. And they have proven that they did not lie so in essence they may be the enemy and at the same time they hate but on top of that they show you the reality whom they are they are not hypocrites in that sense with us we claim the shahada we say the shahada we claim to love we claim he is the messenger we say Allah is one and we surrender to Allah we call ourselves Muslims but our actions are in another village altogether Allahu Akbar our actions are in a totally different valley so who is the hypocrite those who claim something and don't live up to it or those who claim something and are living up to it you tell me subhanallah very easy so we need to know when we claim something work hard to live by it we say we are Muslim we surrender to Allah the reason why we are not happy in our homes in our societies in our communities we are some of the most divided people so divided that if there is a masjid and people have split it into two each one of those two will be split into another two do you know that that's how badly divided we are 
and each person will say that one's not a Muslim and this one is not a Muslim rather than concentrating on commonalities and making it our business to come together we can study we can exchange notes and finally ultimately we can agree to disagree with respect subhanallah it's a correct way forward rather than calling each other dirty names and each person is the only one who's a Muslim at the end of the day it's me and my little group and after that from your group there is another little group and now half the group believes the other half is also not on the fold may Allah protect us that is the disease of the age each one thinks I'm the only one each little group is happy with themselves alone may Allah protect us may he grant us a return to the Quran and the Sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam my brothers and sisters Today, we are in the most desperate need of returning to the teachings of Islam. The only way we can do that is by knowing the teachings of Islam. How many of us are ready, really, to do more to study the deen? It has become so easy. Anyone you want as a tutor, you will find them on the net. Anyone you want as a tutor, you can have a dose of their teachings every day of your life. And you can download and put it in MP3 form and put it into your vehicle or into your little iPod or small MP3 player and have it plugged into your ears. When we see the youth with little MP3 players with the earphones plugged in, a lot of the times they would be just which means their heads are being controlled by the beat that they are listening to and they don't even know and when you say salam alaikum wa alaikum as salam why because they can't hear how loud it, they are speaking because this is even more loud very much more loud so they're screaming at you hey relax calm down calm down that's why if you see someone shaking their head just carry on smile at them let go may Allah protect us now we have a new generation of people who are making use of those mp3 players for the Quran and for the teachings of Islam. Congratulations to you. You are achieving focus once again. You will be focused. Never lose hope. None of us should feel that we are written off completely. You know, I have committed so many sins that now I won't attain the mercy of Allah. That's shaitan. He promised to be in front and behind and on the sides waiting for us in waylay. And he promised as soon as I get hold of them, you'll see what I do. So shaitan comes. When we try to focus, he comes again and makes us lose focus. Sometimes that focus, shaitan wants to make us lose it through an SMS we get. From a school friend, a little flame during our school life. But I'm married with so many children. The message, we quickly hide it. And what we do instead of deleting it, save the number so if her name is for example something let me not say a name in case they are sisters with that name and you find he saves it as Abdullah Abdullah Astaghfirullah slave of Allah A'udhu Billah you rather say Abd shaytan Allah protect us why because you are saving a female's name as a male so that your wife doesn't see it this is all losing focus who made you lose focus but you were a good man you are a brilliant husband. You are a man totally focused. That SMS will not lead you to more than a few minutes of pleasure. After which the fake level of that pleasure would drop you to the lowest. You may lose your entire family and your whole generation. Allah protect us. The amount of regret that comes after sin can only be known by those who have suffered the loss. And we cannot afford to go and test it. Allah protect us. If you want focus, purify yourself. Cut out all haram relations completely, totally. Cut them out. And focus on what you have. You cannot live happily and harmoniously with your own wife and children. You want to please the women of the whole dunya. How? And this happens to us. When we enter the home, we lose focus. We become harsh in our tongues or on our tongues and in our attitude. 
And the minute we exit and you meet someone else, you know, a little woman on the road or where we have gone to a shop and we are on best behavior, Allahu Akbar. So best that we don't even do things that we actually... You know, the smile that you have, broad smile, and she's busy looking at your teeth. Sorry, sir, what whiteningst? Uh, do you use whitening do I use my wife's never asked me that question Allahu Akbar you know the reason I give these examples they are real life examples it's not a joke shaitan is waiting for us so recognize shaitan inna shaitan lakum aduwun fattakhidu aduwa إِنَّمَا يَدْعُوا حِزْبَهُ لِيَكُونُوا مِنْ أَصْحَابِ السَّعِيدِ Shaitan is your open, outright, declared enemy. So consider him that. Consider him that. Treat him as your open, outright, declared enemy. Definitely he calls his group of people towards the flames of Jahannam. How many of us would like to go in that direction? Please, my brothers and sisters, refocus very quickly. And you need to remember, walk on the path. If you have a motor vehicle and your wheel lacks balancing or alignment, you find there is no goodness, no sweetness in driving, even if it happens to be an expensive vehicle. Why? Because of one small milligram of lead that is missing from your tire. Do you know that? One milligram of lead has caused such discomfort in your ride that you are not at ease and peace and you will make sure you stop and get it realigned. So I call on you, my brothers and sisters, just as I call on myself, stop and realign that one milligram of bad and evil that might be in you. And remember, if it is put in the wrong place, you will not enjoy the comfort of the ride to paradise. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant it to us. Very important. So Allah gives us gifts to refocus. And shaitan gives us his own little beautifications in order to divert us once again. How many of us are ready, really, to recognize the devil that has been affecting us within and to deal with him immediately so that we can meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You have a difficult life. Some people live under the tree. Some people live in huts, in homes where they perhaps do not have some facilities that the others have. But believe me, if they are focused, they will achieve a lot. If they are focused, they are happier and more content than anyone else. And this brings me to another very interesting point. You know depression? A lot of the times we are depressed because we've lost focus and that's all. A lot of the times, when I say a lot, there may be an exception or two. A lot of the times we are depressed because we have lost focus. Why do people get depressed? Because they couldn't have what they wanted, when they wanted it, how they wanted. Most depression is connected to that. Some of it might be connected to a medical sickness and so on, but a lot of the times I want to marry so and so. You can't. Oh, I'm depressed. Gone. Fall into real depression. Completely gone and we are out. You know, having said this, my beloved parents who are here, do not stop your children from marrying whom they would like to marry for as long as they are decent Muslims or they are ready to become decent Muslims. Remember that. You know, gone are the days when you can block and stop. I, it's just my call to you. It's up to you to listen or to turn a deaf ear to it if I can use that term. If they would like to get married somewhere, decent people or someone ready to accept the fold, we sometimes may not have it according to our liking. But don't block it and stop it. If you take a look at where and how they met, probably you were guilty of having created the scenario. I know of a lot of people who send their children to universities abroad. Remember, they will get a degree and they will also come back, perhaps. with something more than just a degree. Allah protect us. So you must be ready for that. You, when you're sending them off, you can tell them and warn them. But remember, sometimes they are bombarded for four years by the environment. Five, six years by the environment. Live up to the reality. It may happen. 
If you don't want that, you can educate them online. And online, you will still get sometimes a similar result. So it's all got to do with you and your focus and how you have prepared them to focus. That's important. I cannot be a parent who is not focused and I expect my children to be focused. Father busy having an affair and the child knows about it but he doesn't know how to talk to you. What do you think he is going to do? He will say, Dad, you're trying to block me from marrying this girl. She is ready to revert to Islam. But Dad, you've been having an affair for so long with X, Y and Z. What about that? You say, who told you? The fact that you say, who told you, it confirms that yes, it's true. Doesn't it? If someone tells you, brother, why did you steal the phone? You say, but who told you? That means I stole it. It's confirmation. So how can we have lost focus and expect our children to have focus? This is why once you are married and you have children, it is even more important to be focused and make sure your children watch you and know that you are focused and they see that really you have the pleasure of Allah in front of your eyes. There is no ways we can achieve pleasure through the displeasure of the owner of pleasure. And we know that. How can I achieve happiness by making the owner of happiness upset with me? How? How can I achieve barakah and blessings in my wealth when I earned the same wealth through the displeasure of the owner of the wealth? Allahu Akbar. This is why we need to refocus. Sometimes very interestingly, you know, we have a deal. Someone says, I will give you so much percent interest. Do you know what the business people are doing today? Listen, brother, call it profit, not interest. Don't want to hear that word again, but still give it to me. Did you hear that? Call it profit, not interest. I don't want to hear that word again, but still give it to me. Allahu Akbar, which means we have become greedy sometimes. In our greed, we earn things that are haram. How many times people walk out to a magazine store and quietly they pick up the dirty magazine and they want to purchase it. You have lost focus. You will never have those women. Never ever. And you know what? There was a chance that you would have had better than that in paradise, but you are even blowing that chance. So leave it. You save your money and you increase the chances of having something of your dreams and even beyond. I always tell the young boys and girls that you know what? What do you like in this world? Name it. They will tell you a car, a mobile phone, a this, a that, you know, a woman, a man, something they will give you an answer. I like some scenery, some place, some house, a kitchen, some of the people will tell you. Everything you utter is only from this earth. Nothing is from outside the earth. Have you thought of that? You want a beautiful Rolex. The glass is made from sand. Pressure and temperature gave you the glass. The little chrome was mined, perhaps in Zimbabwe. <laughs> Allahu Akbar. What else happened? You have a leather strap, it's from the cow, perhaps. You have something else, it's perhaps from here. Anything from Pluto? Anything from Venus? Anything from Mars? Nothing. Anything from above the Earth's atmosphere? No. It cannot help you. You, a person of the opposite sex, where were they created from? مِنْهَا خَلَقَنَاكُمْ وَفِيهَا نُعِيدُكُمْ وَمِنْهَا نُخْرِجُكُمْ تَارَةً أُخْرَى Allah says you were created from soil and you will return to it and we will resurrect you from it once again. So they are also from soil, the earth. You have not yet seen one thing from outside the earth's atmosphere and you think that this is a big deal. Allahu Akbar. Allah says in Jannah فِيهَا مَا لَا عَيْنٌ رَأَتْ وَلَا أُذُنٌ سَمِعَتْ وَلَا خَطَرَ عَلَى قَلْبِ بَشَرٍ In it, there is that which no eyes have ever seen, no ears have ever heard, and no soul or mind or heart has ever thought of, even to the least. So if you've thought of something, Jannah will have something better than that, but not that. This is why we say your spouse will be perfect, shape and design as you want, thoughts as you like, everything to your like in your mind. Aren't you waiting for that day? Aren't you waiting for the day? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant that to us. Forget about just your spouse. In this world, none of us are shaped how we want. 
Is that correct? None of us are shaped exactly how we want. Identification, Allah gave it to us. Identification, Allah gave it to us. My thumbprints, my face, my eyes, nose, Allah gave it to us. And it is blasphemous to actually change that. To actually change that, blasphemous. But in Jannah, you will look how you want to look like. And guess what? When someone is seeing you, they will see you how they want to see you. One person, but many different ways of looking. Allahu Akbar. It, isn't it mind boggling? Something beyond understanding? You will look how you want to look like. You will sound how you want to sound like. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant that to us. We lose focus very quickly. Kalla bal al wa al Nay, you lose, meaning you love that which is in front of you, forgetting that which is to come. We love the dunya, forgetting the akhirah. We love this worldly life, forgetting the life after death. And we don't even realize there are people who lived before us who are gone. They are in their graves. What will help them is their deeds. So pack away as many deeds as you can before you pass away. Because that is the time you will desperately need those deeds. You know, people ask a question. Am I allowed to read Quran for the dead? Am I allowed to do this for the dead? Am I allowed to do that for the dead? Am I allowed to sit after three days for the dead? Can we sit after one year for the dead? Can we do this for the dead? So everybody wants to do for the dead. I ask them, brother, sister, what did you do for yourself whilst you are alive? Allah. Can I build a masjid for the dead? Can I drill a well for the dead? Can I print 200 Qurans for the dead? Meaning, they want to give a reward to the dead. But brother, whilst you are alive, why didn't you read Quran? If this person did not read Quran during their life, then they are at loss. If this person did not use their wealth to build a masjid during their lives, then subhanallah, they had so much of the wealth, they sat with it miserly and they counted it every day. Not only will their heirs begin to fight, but if one of them decides to build a masjid, my brother, they did not want the masjid. Why are you building it? They didn't even want it. To them, they were ready to spend that money on prostitutes. Allah protect us. On a high life in France, Allah safeguard us. You know, to go out to a place full of sin and say, let's go on holiday. Allah protect us. They were not bothered. They were not interested in using that wealth in the right direction. How many of us have built whatever we want from now? How many Qur'ans have you read now for yourself? Aren't you focused? Or do you want those to be focused on your paradise after you are already gone? Do you understand what I'm saying? When you are gone, you want others to focus on what you were supposed to be focused on. So shaitan makes them focus on reading Quran for you when they have also not read it for themselves. So look at how shaitan has conned us and made a big fool of us. Allah protect us. Brothers and sisters, read whilst you are alive. Give charities whilst you have money. Do the right thing. Go and read your salah whilst you are alive. Go for hajj whilst you can. Dress appropriately whilst you can. And remember, that will come to your rescue as soon as you pass on. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us. In fact, it will come to your rescue even slightly prior to when you pass on. You'll see the blessings of it in your life. And then you have the beauty of the following verse. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا رَبُّنَا اللَّهُ ثُمَّ اسْتَقَامُوا Definitely those who say that our Rabb is Allah. It's not enough to just say that. Then they are focused. Istaqamu means to be steadfast on the path. Steadfast on the path. You say my Rabb is Allah and you are focused on the path, steadfast on it. The angels will descend to them telling them there is no fear upon you on this day, no sadness. We want to give you good news of the paradise that you have been promised. So the angels will descend 
and tell them not to worry. We are giving you good tidings, glad tidings of the paradise that you have been promised. From this verse we learn that we are focused upon paradise and we would like to achieve it and this is why we need to be focused on the path and the angels will come down to us and tell us that you do not need to fear because that paradise that you were focused upon is yours. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. This is why every time Allah says, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ لَهُمْ جَنَّاتِ Every time he speaks of the believers who do good deeds, he says, for them is paradise. That's the focus. That is the focus. Now you have a verse where Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa is instructed to tell us to be focused on the path. What is the path? وَأَنَّ هَذَا صِرَاطِي مُسْتَقِيمًا فَاتَّبِعُوهُ وَلَا تَتَّبِعُوا السُّبُلُ Indeed, definitely, this is my path, the straight path. So follow it, follow the straight path. And do not follow the paths on the side. They will lead you astray. They will lead you away from your deen. They will make you lose focus. We always give the example of a person. Let me say it again. You know, they say there was a man who was at the train station. And he was catching a train going up north. And when he was standing on the wrong side of the platform, so he jumped into the train that was going to the south. So he jumped in without asking questions. This is lack of focus. He doesn't even know which platform to stand on. Wallahi, some of us are like that. We don't even know what our deen is all about. So you haven't yet read the sign saying north and south. So he wants to go to the north, he jumps into a train going to the south because he hasn't even read the message. He doesn't even know what it's all about. So when he jumps in the train, it was a sleeper. You know, they have a bunk. So the people at the bottom, he went to sleep at the top. And four hours later, he gets up. He says, how far are we from that place in the north? They said, well, we are heading down south. He says, Ajeeb, the trains of today, top half going north, bottom half going south. Imagine, he is focused wrongly. He didn't see anything when he came to the platform. He jumped onto the wrong train. Four hours later, he was corrected, but he refused to take the correction. And he actually still believed he was going to go up north. Imagine, he still believed it. That is what we are doing with Jannah. Amazing. We believe we are heading north. We believe we are heading to paradise. We believe we are going up, subhanallah. But at the same time, our actions are heading in another direction. And when someone comes to Bangalore, to our homes to tell us, listen, we are actually supposed to be heading in another direction. We say, ajeeb. Half of the people are going there, the other half going there. And we're still walking in the wrong direction. Is that going to be the case? If that is the case, we've lost focus. My brothers and sisters, no matter what level we have achieved, we can always still better ourselves. And remember, with humility and humbleness, if Allah has given you the opportunity to get close to Him, don't think that others are not close to Him. I tell you why. How many good deeds are there? There are thousands of good deeds. Do you agree? How many sunnah deeds are there? Hundreds of thousands. Do you agree? So if you are engaged in 20 good deeds, Someone else might be engaged in 40 good deeds, but totally different from the ones you are engaged in. So when you look at them and you see what you are doing is not there, you start thinking this person is not religious. But hang on, they have engaged in other deeds, perhaps much more than you in quality and quantity. And you don't even know. So stop judging. Ever judge a book by its cover. If Allah made it easy for you to cover yourself with niqab, say Alhamdulillah, thank Allah. But don't look at someone who's not there on that level and think, these people are not even on the deen. If you have grown your beard, Alhamdulillah, never look at someone without it and think these people are not there. Perhaps they respect their parents and you don't. Perhaps they do not backbite and you do. Subhanallah. Perhaps they get up for tahajjud and you don't. So good deeds are plenty. They are not confined to what you alone are doing.
Remember that. May Allah open our doors. May He grant us respect of one another. May He make us give up the backbiting, the slander, the gossip, and all other evil. And I've mentioned throughout my talk various aspects and issues that I feel that the people of today may be engaged in because across the globe we are human beings and we know what's going on. May Allah make us from those who can stand up really respect and honor of the Prophet ﷺ is only through following what he has said. He does not want anything else. He wants us to follow his example, to follow his way, to follow his commands, to make sure that whatever we do, we get it from his instruction and cut out whatever will displease Allah because we need to focus. As I have started by mentioning what we should be focusing on, what we are focusing on and how we can improve. And I hope whatever I have said this evening will benefit one and all, not only in this beautiful city, but inshallah across the globe. Really, as I said, it's an honor to have been here in your midst this evening. Inshallah, I will be leaving early morning. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept this stopover in this beautiful city. I have said much. I could still go on and on, but I feel inshallah that we will leave more for next time. You know what I normally say, those who have heard a lot of my lectures would probably have heard that I say, cough mixture, you cannot have the whole bottle once. You have to have a spoon at a time. So let's hope we can stop the spiritual cough that we've been having, or should I say anti-spiritual cough that we've been having by a small dose that we've had this evening. I call on you to make use of whatever is at your disposal to increase your knowledge about what we are meant to be focused on and never lose focus because it may well be that the environment that is so hostile around us makes us very quickly lose focus, get back onto that musalla, onto that sajjada, and turn to Allah. Ask Allah for focus. Allahumma ya muqallib al qulub, thabbit qulubana ala dinik. O oh Allah, in whose hands lies the turning of the hearts, turn our hearts towards the deen on the path. May Allah open our doors until we meet again, inshallah, in this beautiful city. We say, wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad. سبحان الله بحمده سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك نشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت نستغفرك ونتوب إليك